I got some good stuff for y'all. Um, I want to thank first um, for everybody that know Miss Hart. Can you put your hand up? She actually recommended me to Miss Smith, Miss Nadine Smith, and me and Miss Smith have been going back and forth on putting this assembly together. And as soon as she asked me what I do, I said not a problem at all. Um, during this, this, this speaking, um, when I go speak to different kids, I, I've been to group homes, I've been to children's jails, I know some of y'all might call them uh, baby bookings, I've been down there to speak to kids, I've been to group homes, I've been to different facilities. The one thing that I do, I'm gonna do it today, I'm gonna keep it 100, 100% real, so like I like to say, keep it funky. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm not gonna sugarcoat nothing, I'm a, I'm a straight shooter. Uh, so today, this was today. Uh, I know y'all see me in the hallway, y'all call me Mr. Mason. Today I'm going to be doing a table on Mason. Alright? Don't get carried away with that this. Is that cool? Is that cool? It's not loud enough. Is that cool? Alright. My slide show that I'm going I'm to I'm show you, um, I actually put this together, I believe, yesterday. Uh, I was in uh, Mr. Brown's class, and I was kind of thinking about how can I put this slideshow together for y'all, so y'all can kind of see my journey. But then also, backtrack and let y'all know what I did to fight through different things to be able to get to where I got to as far as playing with the New York Jets. Um, I also played with the um, Baltimore Mariners, which is an arena football team that was here in Baltimore. So I came up with the slideshow. I'm gonna go through it. But then I'm going to backtrack because, like I told y'all, I'm going to keep it 100% real. And I also want y'all to know that I'm no different than y'all. So if y'all going through something, problems at home, with friends and things like that, uh, situation with parents, I, I bet you the amount of money that I, I've been through the same thing. All right? So the title, Table Mason from Beginning to the Present. All right? This next slide, y'all better not laugh. Okay? <laughs> As Ms. Nadine said, listen up. I was born in Baltimore City, West Baltimore City, um, 930 West Franklin Street. That's a picture of my brother and me. I'm the, the chunky one in the front. Um, my elementary school was right in the heart of uh, Murphy Home Projects, right off of Martin Luther King Boulevard. Um, from there, going to uh, second grade, my family, we moved to Emerson Village. Um, and from there, I went to, to the Baltimore County, and I started going to Emerson Heights, right off of Ingleside and Catonville. That started my second through fifth grade. So I'm getting to my football journey. 1990, I like my high top. That's, that's smooth. That's sharp. That ain't even like high top in the school. I'm sorry, that's sharp. That was my first year playing organized football with the Willow Raiders in 1990. Um, I started getting to the whole field of knowing the game, of how I'm playing football. Um, through that whole process, I was still getting good grades. Um, another thing that's real major to me and close to my heart is the education factor. If you don't believe me, any kids I've talked to on the regular, I always tell them about education. Everyone that comes to me and say they want to play football, the first thing I ask them, what's your grades like? And then we get to another, another discussion because I'm real heavy on grades. I'm real big on grades. So that was 1990. Through Woodlawn High School. Right. Things started to pick up a little bit. Um, the picture on the right, an old coach had made as a, a, a post that he made of me um, from one of my games at Woodlawn High School. And the medals on the right are from running track in high school. All those medals I received were from my junior and senior year of just running outdoor track. I didn't run indoor track. All those medals were outdoor track. Um, my senior year in, in high school, I finished second in the state in the 100. I finished second in the state in the 200, the open 200. Um, letters from everywhere. I think one of the biggest letters I got to run track, I was offered a letter, offered a scholarship to run track for, the, uh, for Yale University, right, which is an uh, a Ivy League school, a big Ivy League school. I, did, I decided to go play football instead. So that takes me to UVA. The picture at the top right corner is my actual college jersey. Um, the picture down the bottom left is a uh, kind of like a collage that the alumni put together for me. 
the picture the top, the top corner, me and my teammates, we playing at the University of Wisconsin. And this picture in the bottom right, you probably can't see, but that, through the whole UVA career, I was on that top list for kick returns. And that dates back to like the 30s and the 40s and the 50s. But while doing this, I still get my grades. And just to add, in high school, I finished with a 365 grade point average and finished top 10% of my class at um, Willow High School. So again, that, that goes to education again. Thank you very much, Ms. Smith, for starting that class for me. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so let's get to the good part. There we go. I put this picture to the left up so you can really see that it's a, it, it says official, right? Yeah. It says official, right? Yeah. So it's official. That was a Jets player. The one at the bottom is my football card. And to the top of two of the pictures, one when I was about to play preseason game against the Bengals, and one at the bottom I was in practice for my football play. That's a one-handed catch with a the, the chin strap across my face, so I couldn't see. Y'all can do that, y'all come tell me, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's 2009, I played in arena football also with the Baltimore Mariners. Here in Baltimore, right down at, they call it Baltimore Arena, but now it's first Mariner Arena. So some of y'all might go there for like a circus, for basketball games, things like that. That's 2009. That's some of the awards and stuff I got in my, my closet. You see my Jets hat, my Woodlawn W, my UVA hat, different Hall of Fame plaques and trophies, um, different things like that. Um, and this is what I'm at now. On the left hand side is my Table Mason of the Kids logo. That's the, the brochure um, that was given out at the doors. Um, that picture at the bottom was with the fifth grade class at Randallstown Elementary School. I did a sports fit day for the entire fifth grade class at the University of Ramstown Elementary School. The top right corner is a news segment. We don't have the sound, but all y'all have the iPhones and the Galaxy. You type in Tamar Mason and um, WJZ. You get to hear what I was talking about. And what Ms. Smith was saying, last year I kicked off a, um, a, a, a slipper drive, a character slipper drive for the University of Maryland Children's Hospital, where I collected 200 pairs of slippers for the kids, um, I went and delivered the slippers to the kids at the hospital. I even took, bought food for the parents, so the parents could be able to eat. The, the thing that's bugging me out and got me gone this year, we quadrupled that. Um, we went from 200 pairs of slippers last year to, I think, we're up to close to 1,000, over 1,000 pairs of slippers already. Um, this year, to take to the different hospitals and start a, a slipper drive, um, a hospital tour this year. Um, that was a real quick. Quick presentation, right? But I told y'all at the beginning that I'm no different than some of y'all. So let's backtrack. Go all the way back in time. This was the good times. Great times, great fun, family. Still good times. When I got to middle school, that's when things started to take a change a little bit. Um, like I said, I like to keep it 100% real. And what I'm about to tell y'all, I really don't talk that much to a lot of people about because it's personal. But when I got to seventh grade, and I'm doing great in school, doing great with playing football, that's when the house life or the home life started to get a little rocky. My mom and dad began to argue, and I started to notice a change with them, even a change with my dad doing a lot of, a lot of stuff with me and my brother. Um, I have an older brother that lives in Atlanta, so, and my thing as a kid, I like to be outside. And all that you have to do with me is just throw the football with me. That had nothing to do with money, nothing to do with shoes, or nothing like that. It was just the time spent. That was seventh grade. Eighth grade, I noticed a tremendous change. I started to notice, even when I go to football practice, my dad stopped being at football practice the entire time, but he would come back to end the practice. Still, again, it's not my business. You know what I mean? That's my mom and dad. I'm in eighth grade. I don't care about that. All I have to do is get good grades, play football, play basketball, just be a kid. Um, the summer of graduating from eighth grade, that's when I found out my mom and dad were splitting because uh, I, just, I like to say my dad wanted to take a break for a little bit. And 
I know some of y'all probably had that same issue. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but again, that's me letting y'all know I'm no different than none of y'all, okay? Um, so while this was going on, and I noticed, like I said, I'm a, I'm a smart person. I, I, I sit back and observe everything. My, my brother's four years older than me, so my brother's about to graduate high school. I'm about to go in high school. So what I did, I started picking up things from the environment. So eighth grade, like I said, I keep one the real. I'm not going to lie to y'all. Eighth grade, that's when I started to do the street stuff. Right. First time in eighth grade when I held my first gun. First time in eighth grade when I, I sold drugs for a little bit. Like I said, I'm going to keep it 100 with y'all. Because I'm, I'm standing in front of y'all. I graduated college, graduated high school, made it to the NFL, and I'm here now. So I'm not going to lie to y'all. But the thing that made me switch, oh, I added, so I know some of y'all doing it now. I tried weed for the first time. I tried liquor for the first time. This is between eighth and 10th grade that I did all this stuff. But the crazy thing with it was, I still maintain honor roll grades. See me, like I said, I like to observe. I know where, to me, where my protection was. I knew how to play the game. So. I knew to be good in school, but if I'm bad in the neighborhood, and if the police were to come and, and I got in trouble, the first place they're going to go is going to ask, what type of student is he? They can't say nothing wrong because I'm on the honor roll all the time. But my switch that made me change was 10th grade, living with my mom, brother in school, was, I, got, I can't do this to my mom. She didn't do nothing to me. Wherever I wanted to go, she took me. Brother, to the basketball court, and I'll tell you a story. I remember um, wanting to go to the basketball court, and it's probably like a four inch thick sheet of ice on the basketball court. And my mom took me to the basketball court. So it was like, why am I doing all this dumb stuff to somebody that didn't do anything wrong to me? So that's when I started to stop doing that. Stop hanging around my friends that were getting in trouble, and I was getting in trouble a lot in the neighborhood. Everything came back to where we lived at in the neighborhood I lived in. So I said, I got to stop this. I got, I got to leave that alone. Short story, you no know, long story short, as a 10th grade, I lived with my, uh, I moved with my dad because my mom moved back in the city. I knew if I moved back in the city, what was going to happen. I'm already off that, you know, hanging on the edge between good grades and crossing over to being a street person fully. So I decided to stay. And um, in the county with my dad, even though it was still near Emerson Avenue, I stayed in Cook's Lane, right off of Security Boulevard, not that far from Emerson Village, but that's when my spin came around. Um, even living with my dad, even though we were living together, he still was out doing his thing every Friday. He'd give me money for gas, for, my, um, for the call, money for the weekend, then he'd go do his thing. All right, cool. I'm, I'm smart enough now, and I know I had friends, you know, friends, parents that come or that are, don't mind me coming to that house and, and, and staying there. So I started to embrace that, you know what I mean? So as I started to get older and got to 11th grade, got to 12th grade, you know what I mean? I had a, like a small heart to heart with my dad and let him know that I didn't like that factor. You know what I mean? He came, he asked me one day, like, do I think he was a good dad? And to be honest, I told him no. I'm not going to lie. But that was one thing I told you of, of different hurdles that you got to jump if you want to get, if you want to be successful, if you want to do something great, whether you want to be an athlete, you want to be a doctor, a teacher, police officer, you're going to jump, you're going to, have, you're going to run into hurdles, but it's how you jump those hurdles. Are you going to keep tripping or are you going to trip yourself up? So remember that. When you're walking around the hallway, when you, you get in trouble, you're mouthing off to a teacher, and another thing is not taking the blame. If you do something wrong, own up to it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's easier for an adult to forgive you if you just own up to it than it is if lie, 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 and then they got to piece it together. It makes it worse. So get through that factor in um, high school and playing sports. So most of my anger and everything came into when I got on the field or when I got to track um, of just holding everything in of when I was in the past or when I was young. Um, <clears throat> Needless to say, me and my dad, we, we, we killed all that. We, we squashed all the beef, everything got good. And the reason why things got better between me and my dad during my college years, in 2000, um, we just came off the road from losing a game to Georgia Tech. And 
I got a call that he had his heart attack. This is the first heart attack he had. So automatic, everything that we went, I went through with him in the past kind of like disappeared for that simple fact because you never know what's going to happen. You never know when somebody's going to leave your life. You never know when somebody's going to pass. And I'm pretty sure some of y'all have experienced that already at a young age. So I get away with that, all right? Cut and drive. Uh, I'm going to forget that. I'm going to forgive him because if I didn't, if he didn't make it through that, that, that minor heart attack, then I wouldn't be able to say anything to him. So I let that go. And, and it started to take weights off my shoulders. So I started to move along. Then we got into with the New York Jets. And, and, and to say, with, the, with UVA, I graduated. Um, so I, I did do good with that $120,000 scholarship that they gave me. I graduated. And I'm going to show you later. That's why I have this tube. I carry this around everywhere I go. I have this tube to show everybody that, you know I mean, I'm a uh, Baltimore City boy, uh, Franklin Street, Emerson Village. Went through the stuff I just told y'all. And I graduated from one of the top five universities in the United States. And they go from top, between top five and the top two universities in, in the United States or in the world. And I had the opportunity to graduate. It wasn't all because I could play football. It was because at the end of the day, when I graduated from Woodlawn High School, I graduated with a 365 grade point average. I graduated top 10% of my class out of 400 and I think 20 kids. So out of 420 students, I was top 10% of that class. So again, like I said, I keep it real with y'all because I want y'all to know everything isn't sweet, everything isn't gold all the time. But you can make it that way depending on how you, you want your, your role to go. So if you want your role to go sweet and gold, then you got to kind of like help that out and make that. You know what I mean? The teachers here, the staff here, I know y'all probably think, well, they don't like me because they want to give me attention, they want to do this, this. But I want y'all to think about it and, and put yourself in that shoe. If you were to reverse it and all the teachers in the school were the students and y'all were the teachers and y'all act the same way, how would y'all react to the, to the teachers being students? Just think about it for a minute. So when teachers give you detention, because of your behavior, or if they're trying to talk to you to try you to try to deter you away from doing the things you're doing, they're not doing it because they're trying to get you in trouble. They're doing it because they actually care. Because if you think about it, teachers get up around like five, five thirty. Some of them, some of the staff they get up like five o'clock in the morning, five thirty in the morning. And they take that drive to come here for seven hours. So the last thing on their mind is to sit here and take verbal abuse. You know what I mean? From, from kids that they're trying to educate. That they're trying to get to the place like where I'm at. Whether it, it's doctors. How many people here want to be doctors? How many people here want, want to be teachers? You got teachers in here? What's some other things people want to do? Football. You got football. What else? Psychology. Or pediatrician. All right, calm down, calm down, calm down. All right, let's come back, let's come back. Listen up, listen up. Listen up. I thank y'all for coming back. The reason why I asked y'all that question is because if y'all don't have the basic, the basic education that the staff here is trying to teach you, no matter what the class is, it's going to be hard for you to succeed in the field you want to succeed in. A lot of y'all want to become doctors. Doctors, a lot of times, you're in school for like 12 to what, 16 years? Yeah, you're like 12 to 16 years if you want to go to, um, if you want to be a doctor. Pediatrician, the same way. I wanted to be a pediatrician. I got to UVA along with football. I'm like, man, that's a lot of school. And I'm like, I can't do this. But what I did do, I graduated with a, a, a degree in anthropology. And the funny thing with the anthropology degree, a lot of people will think, uh, anthropology, what do you do, dig up bones and stuff like that? That's archaeology. Anthropology is a study of people. I like people. If I didn't like people, I wouldn't be working at the school. Because I'm around people every day. But I like people. I like doing the things like that. I like talking to kids. I like talking to adults. I just like talking to people in general. People are very interesting. 
But that's the, that's the road I follow. That's the road I took. And I get asked every day, what you gonna do with that degree? What you gonna do with that degree? I'm happy with what I'm doing with my degree. And I got to do after football. So again, my next step, we got back now, we back to the Jets. Played in the NFL, everything seemed pretty cool. Left the Jets, and in 2009, I played football again. But then after 2009, and, and recently, I hit another speed bump. Cause we talking about building character, right? We talking about getting through adversity. We talking about trying to get past hurdles that we, we, we're challenged with every day. Uh, two years ago, in January, the same guy I was talking about earlier, I lost him on January 3rd, 2011, to a massive heart attack. Right. So 2011, I was about to turn 31. So here I'm sitting here 31 years old, and the same guy we had, I had some issues with when I was, at, was a kid, but like I said, we've been in our relationship, we've been the best friends ever since. Um, one Thursday night, he had a massive heart attack in 2010, and luckily he made it to the new year, and he passed January the 3rd of 2011. So that started the bumpy road again, in my life again. So I ain't gonna never hurry to get over. So a year goes past. 2012 comes. Along this journey, so again, we asked in 2009, so I got a full scholarship to UVA, played football. Um, by the way, I forgot to tell you, I played football in Hawaii, and now I'm back here, I played with the Jets. Then Jets, I got to go to Tokyo, I played in Tokyo, and back again in 2012 of March, I lose my best friend. 32 years old, he got shot and killed in Texas. So again, that's two people that's gone, near and near to my heart. So I'm like, all right, like, how much stuff can I take? So that's March. June comes around, 2012. I lose another friend. This one to a motorcycle accident. High school friend. So now I got three fingers up. This was in a year. So, okay, I'm going through this, still fighting through my dad's passing. And here comes a week before Thanksgiving in 2012. My cousin get killed in D.C. So that's four things. I got four fingers up. So now I'm, a, I'm 32 years old, and before and after my, 30, my 32nd birthday, I done took on a lot of stuff and had to carry that weight on my shoulders. So I'm going through all this and still trying to see like whether I fit in, should I keep continuing going on. This is a big, this is a big hurdle to handle. And not only to add another best friend that's still fighting for me is battling um, a variant cancer, brain tumors, and, uh, and other illness, illnesses. And she's 33 years old. So I'm sitting here with not only those four deaths, and I got a best friend who is my vice president of my um, foundation. That's, um, that's fighting for her life as we speak. I just talked to her today after coming out of her um, induced coma. So again, call about um, jumping hurdles. But every day I come to this building, I smile every day, I talk to every kid, I talk to every staff, because I know this is the hurdle I gotta overcome in order to make sure I help y'all. And this is what I want y'all to do. When y'all fight, y'all run into hurdles, I want y'all to do the same thing. Remember, what y'all want to do when y'all get older or where y'all want to be at. Don't let those hurdles stop y'all from being what y'all want to be. So after fighting through all that and still going through a lot of that stuff and the accomplishments, and now I'm here. The main thing is I love working with kids. I love doing for kids. Not only am I doing slip and drive for kids, um, I go visit hospitals. Um, I do fundraisers for kids. I do sports fit days, well, I'm going to different schools in Baltimore City, Baltimore County on my own time, and I'm putting on a, a, a fit day or a field day for, for kids in Baltimore City, Baltimore County. So what I'm telling y'all, even though I had fun playing in NFL, playing in the college, to me, I think God's mission for me was to come back and help y'all or to talk to y'all the reason why I'm in the school. I taught at elementary schools, middle schools, group loans, 
um, residential facilities. I even work on a site board with adults. So everything, my whole track, my whole field has been working with people the whole time. And now I'm back here at Parker High School with y'all. The one thing I want y'all to take from here, and I see this everywhere I go, and I'm gonna end shortly. I dare y'all to be great. I'm daring y'all to be great. And what I mean by dare to be great, don't just say it, but believe it. So when your friends wanna do something, so basically if your friends wanna go left, and you know going left will be, will be detrimental to you, will be bad to you, go right. Be original, be yourself. You don't have to follow what your friend's doing in order to, be, to accomplish things. Because the thing that's going to happen is, and my, my fifth thing, I'm going to hold my fifth hand up and I'm done after this, I got a friend, he's like a little brother to me, that's been in jail since 2010. So that's the fifth thing that I'm plugging through. He's been away since 2010 because he wanted to go the opposite way. And I'm asking y'all, and I'm begging y'all, and Y'all can talk to me anytime y'all see me in the hallway, pull me to the side, y'all got things going on. Do not become a statistic. Do not keep allowing them to build these jails for y'all. Do something different. If y'all artists, let me see y'all artwork in museums. If y'all rappers, musicians, let me hear y'all play. If y'all athletes, let me come see y'all play sports. So do something different. Dad should be great. And again, if y'all want to look up anything on me, my website is k1masonlovingkids.org. You can go to Google and type my name in. If you have any questions for me, or you see me in the hallway, please ask me. Again, I thank y'all for letting me do this. Um, yeah, it'll be great.